Let's uh, meditate with uh, Pastor Etis. Saturday, November 14, 2020. We are meditating according to the Scripture Union program for reading the Bible. And we use the 2020 Bible Reader. It's uh, the devotional time. Take your Bible, please, and let's uh, meditate uh, together. You can open your Bible in Second uh, Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 1 through 13. The main topic is examine yourselves or final warnings from the Apostle Paul. We can add live in peace. In order to de deepen this uh, devotional time, here are some questions from the Bible reader. Is there an order to obey? You must question yourself while reading this passage, while meditating on the scripture, on the today passage. What truth God reveals to me? The last question is, for my prayer, is there anything that God shows me, shows to me, whom do I have to repent of, whom to believe and obey, why thank God and praise Him, for which to formulate my request to Him. Visit us at www.eglisedoxadeo.com It's our website. Follow us on Facebook Doxadeo Lushi. Lushi is L S H I. On Twitter and YouTube go to Doxadeo Lubumbash. Let's pray. <clears throat> you are the Almighty God. You are the God who loves us. This is why you are warning us in your word to correct us, to show us the way, the right path. We bless your name and we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit during this time. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Welcome to this uh, devotional time. May the grace of uh, the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and uh, the fellowship of uh, the Holy Spirit be with you all. We can read uh, the first verse. 
This is the third time I am coming to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. The apostle, when he will come to Corinth to visit this church, he heard about some sins like quarreling, jealousy, angry, selfish ambitions, slander, gossip, arrogance, disorder. When he will come, he will confront that people. He will confront that persons because it's not good to mix the truth of God the holiness of God with uh, the sins. This is why he will confront them. But uh, he is showing to us how to deal with uh, these uh, sins. Everything must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now we can uh, take uh, the verse uh, 4. For he was crucified in weakness, but he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by God's power. There is a problem of sins in that church, but the big problem is the theme of the Apostle Paul. He is talking about weaknesses and strong. The power of God is working among the people. They are saved, but they need to recognize that they are weak and then God will take care of them. Verse 5, test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself, or do you yourselves not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you unless you fail the test? It's a, a big thing, it's a great thing for us today. We know the problem of the false apostles. They were in the church of Corinth doing their bad job. Now, the people of Corinth were saved, but with the false apostles, Maybe the, maybe the faith is stopped somewhere. This is why they have to question themselves to see, to test if they are in faith, if their faith is growing instead of regressing, instead of coming down. It's a good thing for you, it's a good thing for me to test, to see if my knowledge of Christ is growing or is regressing, is coming down. 
we must test our faith. In that time, it was because of the false apostles who came with uh, their teaching, teachings in uh, that church to put trouble among the people. This is why it was so important to test, to examine the faith of uh, one, the faith, the faith of uh, each one in the church. The same problem is for you and for me right now. We have to test, to check if our faith is growing. Verse 7, but we pray to God that you do nothing wrong, not that we may appear to pass the test, but that you may do what is right, even though we may appear to fail. We have a good example for, uh, from uh, Paul. He is not praying for himself. He has the burden of the church and he were keeping praying for them. What was his prayer? We pray to God that you do nothing wrong. That is very important. As son of God, as daughters of God, the prayer of your leader must be that you do nothing wrong. And we must pray also that the people must do right. That is very important. As a leader, you can take this scheme. Praying for the church, praying for people to keep them on the track to keep them on the right path, to keep them on the way of God. The way of God is to avoid the wrongdoing, but to do what is right in the sight of God. We can uh, take uh, the verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind, be at peace. That is, that is very important. We must rejoice in the Lord. We must rejoice. We must grow. Our faith must grow. We must tend to the image of Christ. Every day, every time, we must grow, we must go, we must focus on the image of Christ. The second thing is, the third thing is, be encouraged. Sometimes there is people in uh, the assembly, in the church, instead of encouraging other people, they are discouraging them. We must uh, encourage other people in what they are doing, not uh, criticizing them, but uh, encouraging them building them up because the work of the Lord need that the people must be strengthened by your word, strengthened by my word. You not, 
you must not be there to criticize, to discouraging people, but to help them to go ahead, to go forward. We have something very interesting in the verse 13, the last verse. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we can see, we have three persons in God. We can see the Lord Jesus is here with his grace, but we have the love of God the Father because he loved the world, because he loved you. He gave us his begotten son, Jesus. That is the love of God. The love of God is a sharing love. It is the love who give. The love from the Lord is a good love. And the third person is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Without the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Christian life will be impossible. This is why we need the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to be with us. As uh, we can uh, see here, Paul was absent. He sent a letter to the people of Corinth because he wants to strengthen them. He wants to warn them. God is patient. He is very patient. He gives you time to change your mind. He gives you time to change your ways. This is why He is warning you in His word. Maybe. Let's pray now. Father. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your patience to us. We need to be mature. You need, we need to be strengthened. But without the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we will do nothing. We need you. We need the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Our address, www.eglisedoxadeo.com Facebook, Doxadeo Lushi On Twitter and YouTube, Doxadeo Lugumbashi. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.